Let's all welcome Kent Williams. So Kent, please take a seat. So what we're going to do here is a Q&A. And please feel free. I know that in general, Filipinos are very shy. But please feel free to stand up and ask questions at any point in time. I'm going to start the questions just to get the ball rolling. Okay, but again, after I do a question, please feel free to stand up and ask more questions. So, Kent, let's first start by talking about your books. Amalgam compiles 15 years of your fine art work from 1992 to 2007, while your new book, Eclecticus, is published only f four years after Amalgam. When do you decide to do a compilation of your work in book format? Okay, and why did you decide, for example, to do Eclecticus after such a short time? And lastly, what purpose do you think your art books serve? Well, I mean, part of it is, is opportunity. I, I, the with amalgam, you know, it, it does cover. Uh, some of my earliest works. Of course, it doesn't go all the way back to the beginning of my career, but it starts with with the, I guess, with the painting that I felt was was my sort of the key piece or or, or very uh, um, uh, substantial piece at the time. Um, I certainly have paintings that 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 came before that, but but I, f I felt like th with this particular painting, Yellow Boat. Um, it, it was the it was the piece that that I where I finally felt like I had a, I had a direction with my with my personal work my personal painting. Um, obviously, Eclecticus is a shorter a uh, shorter book, a smaller book of, of work, but also a more a more concentrated uh, uh, a concentrated effort where that that. You know, with amalgam, with amalgam, we it's it shows a certain amount of growth, reg progression over time, and then with eclecticus, it it it, sh it shows a, a in a way art a, a more artistically mature point in my my career. Um, hopefully, it, you know, with with the future books, I will be, I'll be able to 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 collect them, collect the work, and. Uh, uh, have more coming out more more frequently. Um, with 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 amalgam amalgam, I, I certainly have more. You know, it covers a quite quite a number of years. And I certainly have more work than that. But I you know I, I really picked and chose the pieces I felt were the most the most successful, and that that meant something to me personally. So how come in Eclecticus only paintings were included and not drawings? Because in amalgam you also had your drawings there. Well, I think part of that was was just just uh, the, probably more so the budget that we had at the time for, for Eclecticus, right, Alan? <laughs> Alan Spiegel was, is my my publisher. Um, um, if, if you know, if if we were if the book was 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 uh, if you know if we. Had a, I guess you could say, a larger budget. I would have probably included more drawings. However, you know, we are going to do sh in a short amount of time. We are going to do a collection of, of of drawings or at least works on paper that'll probably come out within the next year or so. Okay, this I'm sure this is a question that everyone wants to ask you. Why aren't you pursuing graphic novels anymore? <laughs> well, you know, at some point in time, I. I I mean, I still have a passion. I still, I still love graphic novels, but at some point in time, I, I a while back, I, I realized and this was before the Fountain. I, I was working on a project, and I realized I just, I was getting older, and 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 you know, when I was younger, I thought that I that I could, I could do it all. I, that I could just, I could, I could do my graphic novels. I could do illustration for book, you know, book covers and mainstream uh, magazines, and I thought I could do. Uh, graphic um, on my painting, my personal painting as well. You know, at, when you're when, when at a certain age, you think that that you know life's not forever, but it you think you think it really you think that it is. But but 
in my, I don't know, whenever it was in my mid-30s, I realized, hey, wait a minute, time, time's going by at a clip here, and I, I, I just can't do it all. So I decided to, to focus on more a specific area of my career. And it's not that I won't go back and do any graphic novel work, but the, but, but I had to choose which, which, which path I wanted to put more attention and focus to. And, and, uh, and, and, you know, painting was, was the path that I, that I chose at, at the time. I will probably eventually do, do another graphic novel. As a matter of fact, I have one in the works. I have about 50 pages of a 100 page book complete. But I've been working on that book for the last 15, 15 years or so. So, so, so eventually, eventually I'll, I'll get around to finishing it. Um, but, but I felt at that time, and I still feel it's, it's uh, in having to choose, I feel like my, my painting is what I need to, to, to push the most for now. So let's talk about this graphic novel that you're talking about, which has been in the making for 15 years in, in the counting. I believe the title for this is called Kokoro. Maybe you can tell us what it's supposed to be about. Uh, Kokoro mean, in Japanese means means heart or, or spirit of the thing, and um, it's a basically it's a, a contemporary tale of adoption. Um, of course, you know it's not that simple. I, I it, the, it's a it's, it's an adoption story. But it also includes uh, um, uh, Japanese mythology and 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 dream and fantastical elements as, as well. Um, I I my, my I have an adopted child, and uh, so so when I started this project, obviously that was a thing that was that I was caught up in. It was it was it was occupying so much of my thoughts and and. Um, uh, on a, it was the story takes place in, in Venice, and it was during a trip to to Venice that I that I uh, I I came up with the idea and, and and actually was working on the story on on the plane flight there and there and back. Let's talk a little about your art. Central to your work is the fragmentation of the human figure. When did this process start, and what are you trying to achieve by doing this? Well, you know, I've been, I mean, obviously my work deals with the figure, and, I, and I've been, I've been, um, that's, that's always been the, the core or the, or the, or the main focus of, of my work. Um, also, but also I, I, I'm, I am a big fan of, of, you can probably tell in the, if you've read my graphic novels, you can, you can tell I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of ecliptical storytelling, of, of, of allegory and, and, and and uh, structure that has a little ambiguity at play, and I think that that my desire to well one one reason one aspect of it is is my desire to to suggest or or to retain mystery in work, and and I, I don't I don't like when things generally speaking I don't, I don't like when things are so literal when everything's spelled out, and I I think that it ties in with that you know f uh, fragmenting the figure separating it. Um, um, is it, uh, it is a way to 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 work with the figure, but but get away from from that uh, um, academic kind of kind of uh, classical approach. Well, uh, while certainly retaining uh, you know a certain amount of that, it also brings a certain amount of of, of modern uh, of a modern aspect in, into play. Um, also, in in my more recent paintings, I I've been I've been letting the or I had the desire and, and letting the, the the environment or background play a play a bigger role in the work, where the where the figure is becoming um, less less of the focal point. I mean, certainly the figure is is important to me. I'm not I mean, I'm not planning on losing it altogether, but I, I like the idea of letting the the space, letting the, letting the, the the world that that figure exists in um, play a, play a bigger part, Pull, pulling that background forward. And I think that that all ties into that the 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 idea I have of, of even with my, the, the actual tangible aspect of a painting where where I push and pull the push and pull the figure, push and pull the paint, um, where I where subtraction plays as big a part 
as as addition. Um, again, again, hearkening back to to uh, um, retaining a certain amount of, of of mystery in the work. So, what's your normal process when it comes to starting a new painting? Well, I mean, in, in the literal sense, just like how, how what what I like to do is is. Of course, there are always exceptions to this, but in the, in the, in the broadest sense, I, I like having a model or model or models come to my studio, um, and I'll have a I'll have a, a drawing session, maybe three three hours, five hours, all day long, whatever it is, you know, whatever whatever we have set up, whatever I'm, I'm in the mood for, I suppose, and and I'll just do a, a series of series of straight up, very very observed but matter of fact line drawings. Probably drawings that take, on the average, maybe 20, 20 minutes or so to, to to do, and and of course as I'm as I'm working on these as the drawings, I'm I'm paying attention to to which ones may may be good to work into a, a painting, uh, work into a more more uh, complex composition. In some cases, I may I may have a a, a vague idea or an impression of, of an image, and in some cases I have I have no idea. I'm just I'm just work, doing drawings, and then after that, that's that's when I, I the next day I, I I sort through the drawings. I I I start playing with them. I may I may composite two or three of them together, and um, if if again if I already have a, a little bit more, a more concrete idea of what I want, I start working those other elements into the drawing. Or, or if I don't have an, an idea, I'll, I'll, but I like the figure, I like the drawing, I start weaving the content around that drawing. Work, you know, add, again, adding elements, repositioning the figure, or adding figures to that. And then once I, once I feel settled with that, once I have a drawing that I, that I feel that has, that captures the spirit, or the, or has the right flavor, has the kind of language that, that I'm interested in, then I, I transfer that drawing to a, you know to the canvas regardless you know regardless of the size I, I instead of redrawing the figure onto the canvas I, I find that in, in redrawing it you never really capture the same the same spirit of that uh, of that original drawing so the closest way that I can achieve that or, or retaining that 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 spirit is to transfer the drawing uh, through projection on, onto the canvas. And then, and then start, you know, start at that point. I, I project the drawing onto the canvas, seal it, and uh, start with the painting from there. Now, I may not always, at that time, add all the other elements in the in the composition. Again, it depends on on how complex the composition is, but uh, um, but uh, you know, I start placing the elements and 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 start working from there. I know that the answer to this question is very varied, but normally, how long does it take you to make a painting? Well, certainly, yeah, certainly, there's a lot of lot of variables there at play. But, but I would say, you know, talking about the, the, a larger, more substantial piece of mine, um, I, I'll probably work on that piece over the course of three months, maybe four months. Um, because I, I do work in layers, I work in a lot of lot of glazes, a lot of uh, 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 again su addition and subtraction, and, and sometimes simply put, it takes it takes time for that. Because since I work in oils, it takes time for that that to dry. Now, don't get me wrong, I I, I, ha I may have this one one larger piece um, on the easel, but also have maybe two or three other pieces around that that I switch over to. So so. It, Roughly, I, I like having one primary piece that I'm working on, then have a couple of, of smaller, um, smaller pieces at the same time, so that when I'm in the studio, I don't work for two hours and then have to stop. I can I can just move from one painting to to the next. Um, and of course, that there, again, that there are a lot of factors that that alter that. But generally speaking, that that's what I like to do. So, is there a reason why you choose oil as your main medium when it takes so long to do? Well, you know, I, I I just feel that oil is the is the medium that that most represents flesh. You know, it's it, it to me it's it's the most visceral, the most uh, organic of, of the of the of the mediums. Uh, the 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 medium that, like I said, is 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 has that that 
weight and gravity that 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 the human body has um, and there, you know there and also there's that that tradition of, of oil painting that that to me anyhow has always I've always felt was the the primary medium the the the, the ultimate medium I feel, I feel like if you if you can if you can work in oils you can you know pretty much you can pretty much deal with all the other mediums that are that are out there um, I'm not, I'm not that I'm, I'm knocking, say, acrylic painting or anything like that. I just, I just feel like that, again, that, that oil has this, this, this weight, this, this, uh, presence that, uh, that acrylic just doesn't seem to, to, to do for, for me, you know. Plus, yeah, I think, I think there's more flexibility with oil. Um, when you when one is working with with glazes when you're working with layers you know you have the variation of, of transparent oil semi transparent or opaque which which acrylic does a little i mean not that acrylic doesn't have some of that but there's a, there's a little less there to 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 work with um so anyhow that's 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 how I feel about that i love don't get me wrong i love a lot of materials i love working with different mediums um you know with my with my graphic novel pages I, I I I use a lot of a lot of mixed mixed medium, and in some case, cases, including oil. But primarily, primarily with those with my pages, I'm, I'm working with watercolor, gouache, which which is a you know a opaque watercolor, um, charcoal pen pencil. Um, I really do I really do like experimenting with materials and mix and mixing it up. Is there any medium that you're not comfortable using? Um. Well, I, I mean, honestly, I guess I feel I'm pretty, I'm pretty diverse with a lot, with a lot of materials because I have worked with, with, with a, a lot of, lot of, lot of things and, and, um, they, they, they kind of make sense to me. Um, but the one, the one, the one thing that probably gives me that, the, the most trouble and I've done very little of, and of course, if I, if I worked at it more, I, I would imagine I would get a handle on it, but it's, it's etching. Um, I'm a little bit. I feel like I'm a little bit heavy-handed for etching. Yeah, you know, it's, it's in my mind's eye. I always imagine that that one was really carving into the plate, but in fact, you have to be very sensitive. Um, and and my my approach to drawing is is if you know my drawing is is, is pretty direct. It's very matter of fact. It's you know it's, it's observed. It's 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 um uh, uh very little searching line. Uh, no, very little ghosting. It's, it's I get in there and, and observe, look, make a decision, and go with it. But with etching, you, you you have to have a sensitive touch. And and I'm 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 an artist who I've, I've actually broken the not the, just the tip of the pencil when I'm drawing. Sometimes I actually break the barrel itself. You know, so so I, I have done that where the whole thing is snapped in my hand. So so um, so etching sort of gives me some some trouble. Uh, but other than that, I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I can handle most other things. Among the art movements of the past, which movement has influenced you the most and why? Hmm. Well, I mean, certainly there are individual artists that, that obviously have, have influenced me. But as a, as a whole, I, I think probably... It, probably the impressionists, for the most part, have, have played a bigger part as as a whole, you know. Uh, but not but not so much the you know the maybe the the straight up very true impressionists like like Monet, but but more someone like Degas or Gauguin, who who even though they were working in and around that time, were not really in, in the truest sense, you know, impressionist painters. But still, like I said, as as a group, I, I'm, I was I'm probably more or less influenced by by those guys um but i'm a, I'm a big fan of art and art history both historically speaking and contemporary so so i i do gravitate to to a lot a lot of different things but as if we were speaking individually individual artists um certainly egon Schille and gustav klimt have played a big part in my in the makeup of my work and um uh, some of the the german expressionists like katie kollowitz um, who, who I love, and uh, um, you know, qu quite a number of artists, and also, you know, also to some degree, or more so in my, in my earlier college days, you know, I, I loved Sargent and 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 William Merritt Chase, um, um, Edward Austin Abbey, um, the the you know the the work that that 
uh, the, where the brushwork was more bravura, more 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 bold. Um, but again, that's you know that's me trying to narrow down a, a small group of guys when in fact there's there's so much out there that that I do I do really love and gravitate to. You you classify your fine art under a contemporary figurative painting. When did you decide that's the genre that you paint under? Well, I, I don't know if if I, people people like to classify, right? They like to categorize, and and I, I, even though I don't I don't necessarily like to do that, I know that it does when when it comes to discussion and, and talking about art. It's I, I suppose it, it helps facilitate discussion. Um, you know, really, when it gets down to it, I, I consider myself a, a contemporary painter. Um, but but since since I do, since the figure m more often than not plays the biggest role in in the in my in the compositional makeup of my work, um, um, it, again, it, it's it's more it's easier to just talk about when when I do include the word figurative, you know, in in the description. I don't, you know, I I, I I'm. I don't like the, the the word style when it, when it comes to art, you know. Uh, style style makes it sound sound like something sounds like fashion to me. It sounds like something you you put on and you wear. And I don't think, in the truest sense, art is that. I don't I don't think you choose a style. I think I think you you observe, you look, you put, you put in sincere, honest effort. And out of that effort, out of that sweat equity, comes your your language develops. And and so I would rather call it my language, or 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 something more like that than than actual style. Style so styles, you know, just 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 sounds like I said, sounds more like like like, you know, what 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 kind of shirt I'm going to wear today, or or what shoes am I going to wear? Aside from painting, you also teach. Do you learn more from the artist? Do you, I mean, do you learn more from your students? Or the other way around. Well, I mean, I, I, certainly, I, I mean, I, I do, I do teach a little bit. I teach one day a week at, at our Center College of Design in Pasadena, California. Um, you know, I, I, I it's not that I, that I always want to go and teach that day. I'm so busy. I'm painting. I, I have a lot of work to do. But you know, I, I feel that it, that it's the for me, it's an, a, a rewarding, ultimately in the big picture, a rewarding experience. It gets me out of the studio first of all, because um, if not, I, th I think I would be in there all the time. Um, so it gets me out. I interact, you know, I can interact with people, um, socialize, and and uh, and and it puts me in, in an environment of like minds, people who are interested, hopefully for the most part, in in, in things that that I'm interested in, and. You're right. It also it also uh, kind of keeps me abreast of of you know what what younger younger guys are interested in, what younger artists are pursuing, and what they are interested in. Um, one of the biggest things is that that it it helps in having to talk about art and having to, having to put words together in, in sentences and having to put sentences together in paragraphs to talk about to talk about art and art making. It it makes more concrete my own ideas about about art. You know, it. Uh, I, you know, I didn't really know that really I didn't, until I actually started doing that. And I think that's gone a long way as far as as helping me um, be more certain in a way of, of what my pursuits are. We have a young crowd here. Probably some of them are aspiring artists in the future. What would you say is the best advice you can give to these people? Well, <clears throat> I mean, first of all, I, 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 maybe it's, it's certainly. I think this is obvious. You have to have passion for the thing, right? You have to. Ha you have to have passion for for it. If you don't, if it's a side thing, if it's your hobby or something you kind of think about occasionally, or just when you're when you're making a picture. Um, that, that, that that doesn't make sense to me. You, uh, to me, if to be an artist, you, you have to have passion for it, and and you have to basically live, breathe, and eat the thing. You know, um, I think it's important to to 
not only put in the, the sweat equity and, and, the, and the effort and the hard work, but also put yourself in, in, a, in, in, a, in an environment that's conducive to, to being an artist, which, which includes, obviously includes being, being and communicating with, with other artists and friends who are artists. Um, um, certainly being, staying up to speed on, on what's, what, whether you agree with what's being done or not, at least being aware, you know, of, of what's happening in the art world, in the contemporary art world. And, and, and also having a, an understanding historically of, of, of the, of the lineage. Because, you know, we're, we're all, as artists, we're part of that tree. We're part of that, that tree of art. We may be a twig or, or a leaf, but, but we're still part of that, uh, part of that tree. And I think recognizing that and acknowledging that it is, is important. One of, one of the things I stress to my students is to, to, to get out and, and look at art. You know, so many, it seems like these days so many students are satisfied or, or just simply go online and, and, and look at work when they have to for, for, for class or something like that. And well, that's, that's great that we have that access these days. Um, I think you have to, you, you need to go beyond that, go beyond looking at work just online. And as, and as much as I love the printed page, as much as I love art books, which I'm a big art book collector, uh, and I, and I, I love them to death, you still have to get out there and look at the originals. You have to get in there and, and go to museums and go to galleries because it's only then that you, that you, you, you start building, I think, t intuition for, 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 the subtle things that, that make a difference, you know, the small things um, that that can be all the that that can make all the difference in the world. Um, so, the, so primarily to, to to start, like I said, to build intuition for it, so that when you when you are painting or working or drawing for yourself, you recognize it when you stumble upon it. You know, it's not it's not simply. Uh, you, it's not learning a craft, and then you, then you, then you're, then you take the steps to 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 make it happen. You're not building a house, you know. You're not you're not laying in a foundation and and subflooring and flooring and 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 then eventually a roof, right? You you it, art doesn't work that way. I mean, that obviously there is there, there's a lot to say about craft and developing skill. I'm not I'm not I'm not discounting that, but 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 you have to also have you know gut feeling. You know, it's, a lot of times it's the feel of the thing that that's important, um, and and to and to develop that that feel or, or understanding, one has to get out there, I think, and and really look at look at work and 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 notice the subtlety of things that you just don't see online in a seventy-two DPI JPEG or 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 you know even even in a well-printed book. Do you ever get artists, Blob? Well, I think every 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 artist, writer, creative person does. I mean, we all we all you can't you can't have that muse sitting on your shoulder twenty four seven, right? Um, so yeah, we you know I, I certainly have times where I feel lost or 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 not not sure what direction I want to go in or move in, but um, but that doesn't mean I sit around and wait for 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 something to happen, for something to to like I said, the muse has come set on my shoulder. Sometimes I do have to strong arm myself to get out and work and 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 get in there. And you know, ultimately, more often than not, once once you once you get up and running, when you least expect it, that that thing, that that inspiration or that understanding or or direction or muse comes uh, comes to you, and. Um, but it's you know so it's about being prepared for that muse to come, right? You, you can't just sit around waiting for it and then start to work. You get in there and you work, and and then when it does show up or she shows up or whatever it may be, you uh, you're prepared for it to take action on it. Could you walk us through the process of doing work? Let's say like the graphic art work you did before, um, when you're doing it for let's say a, a mainstream company. And the process when you're interacting with an independent project, something like The Fountain with Darren Aronofsky, could you compare and contrast maybe the process of how you work with the writer or the editors on, let's say, a Marvel property versus uh, a more personal work like The Fountain? Right, right. 
Well, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about how the fountain came about, and then I'll I'll, tr I'll try to sort that out and 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 compare it to 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 working uh, on some sort something that's maybe more mainstream. Um, with the fountain, you know, if if you're familiar with the movie and and what behind the scenes of what happened there, you know, originally Brad Pitt and and Kate Blanchett were were slated to 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 star in the in the movie, and and at, with that the budget was substantially higher. Um, this, the movie actually went into production, I think even twice, and um, and then at some point for for. Whatever reason, uh, Brad Pitt pulled out. Well, I think the first time it was delayed. I, I, if I'm if I understand, uh, I can't. I think Kate Blanchett, were, she was pregnant or, or something, and then then ultimately Brad Pitt pulled out of the project, and that you know stopped the movie, stopped the production, and and the movie was basically dropped. Well, did, well, Darren had Aronofsky had had uh, had the foresight, I, I guess you could say, to retain the rights to do the graphic novel or to do a graphic novel version. Um, separate from from anything to do with the film, so while while the film was 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 uh, was stopped and and, and not uh, happening, he he took the idea or screenplay to uh, DC to Vertigo at DC Comics, and he, I think he had about from what I understand had about three artists that that he was interested that he liked that he was interested in working working with. Um, Primarily the artist that Alan Spiegel represents, um, and uh, both the other two artists were already had previous commitments, so they were already in the middle of projects that that so it wasn't an option for them. And for me, having quit, and no, I shouldn't say quit, have, having backed away from from doing graphic novel work to, to focus on my my painting, my personal work, my gallery work, um, I was wide open. But I wasn't planning on doing any, any graphic novel work. But I wanted to work, you know, with with a project like that. I wanted to work with with that opportunity. I wanted to work with 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 Aronofsky. So so I agreed to do it. Um, at the same time, I agreed to do it with the understanding that that it wouldn't be a movie adaptation, and I wouldn't have to deal with with movie executives or anything like that. That it would be an independent standalone um, graphic novel. Uh, that that like I said, that wasn't that basically didn't have anything to do with the movie, other than it being based on the on the original screenplay. Um, and that's exactly what Darren wanted, and and so we were on the same page uh, with that. Um, so so and and it was you know be, it being a creator project own pro or creator project. Uh, there was there wasn't any any mainstream character issues to deal with, you know. So so um, we didn't, you know. There was therefore, you know, it, 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 there was no expectation on that part to to have to sort out. Um, you know, even even with. To contrast that a little bit, even with an uh, earlier book that, that I did called Meltdown, Havoc Wolverine Meltdown with John J. Muth, um, that was, if you, if, if you know that, that was, that was originally under, under Epic Illustrated or Epic Comics. And, and because it was under the Epic imprint or the Epic umbrella, it gave us the freedom, even though they were mainstream characters, mainstream superior characters, because it was on the umbrella of Epic, it gave us the freedom to to play with them a little bit more than we would have had if, if it was run straight through Marvel itself. Um, you know, I, I, I we were to try and we you know we were, we were buddies then, and, and we had both had I think we both had our John Muth had done Moon Shadow at the time, and I I had just finished finished a book called Blood, and and. Uh, we, we, you know, we both were looking for wanting to do, you know, because having, you know, from, I guess there is, there was still that sort of youthful enthusiasm about wanting to do something that was, that was superhero like. But at the same time, we, you know, it, our artwork wasn't, didn't really fit that mold, you know. So, so we knew we kind of had to choose 
or at least I felt, you know, I had to choose a character that would allow me the freedom to, to, to move it outside of, of that sort of what was expected. Um, primarily get him, getting him out of the, his costume, right? So, so I, so I knew with Wolverine, there was a, there was the opportunity there to, to, to dress him down. And, um, and if you know the book, he's primarily in a, in a, in a white tank top t-shirt and, and cargo pants, right? And, uh, or nude, so in some cases. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, so there, there, you know, there's certainly, there's certainly, uh, some framework that went, if you're doing main, a mainstream character, you do have to, you know, stay within. But, but at the same time, we had, we had the freedom a little bit there to, to move outside the box, you know. Is that, does that kind of answer your question? Okay. More questions? Don't be shy. Um, no, uh, generally speaking, I, I I shy away from. I mean, I, I know I know the computer really well. I know Photoshop really well. As a matter of fact, I was I was amongst my my artist friends at that time. My 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 comrades at the time. Um, I I was sort of had already, had already delved into into one of their earlier Macs, and and as a matter of fact, I I didn't even know it at the time, but I had the I, I was working with the, the very first version of Photoshop, I kind of went into it not knowing anything at all about computers, um, thinking that you know, all that stuff had been around at least for a handful of years, not knowing that, that, that it had not, that, that, I had, that what I was working with was, was, had just been introduced. Um, but at the same time, getting back to your question about, about digital, digital work, I... I in some in some cases, there were you know I played around with it and did a little digital work on some of the some of the independent pages in in the books, but for the most part, they're all you know they're all hand handmade analog analog uh, images. Um, you know, there's something there's something I was asked a question earlier with the interview about about my feelings about digital work, and I'm certainly not against it, but my personal feeling is that is that Whenever, I, whenever I, I look at a, a digital image, I may, I may initially like it. I may, it may uh, get my attention. I may be attracted to it. But something about it, once I realize it's digital, I find myself not going back to it. I find myself that is, it's, that is fleeting. You know that 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 I, I, I may even like it at first, but then I just have no desire to, to really go back to it after after the fact. I think it has something to do with just knowing the thing doesn't exist, you know, that, it, that there's no tangible thing to hold on to. Even if I was to never be able to see the, the original, knowing that it exists makes a difference to me, you know. And then the other thing that, that, that the other, I guess, answer to that is, is which is a practical kind of, kind of thing, is that... Uh, you kill I mean, as an artist you're killing half your income because you don't have the original to sell anymore and i know that you know in in the past when i was doing a lot more graphic novel work that that at least half of my my income was made up by by selling selling originals right so so i don't understand why one would want to want to lose that opportunity or option you know which maybe it benefits me now because or, and people who do still do traditional work Maybe since there's less original material out there, it'll make what we, what we do more valuable. I, I don't know. How do you go about your regular day? Um, do you treat this like an eight to five work or it's a free flowing process? No, it's not. It's certainly not a free flowing process. You know, I'm, 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 uh, it's, it's a, to me, it's about habit and ritual. You know, um, I, I think that if I treat it like, like, you know that that haphazardly, like free flowing, like you're suggesting, you know, I probably wouldn't get work done. <laughs> I wouldn't get enough done. You know, um, I like I like getting up early. I like I like having an early start to my day. Um, you know, I wake up, I, I have my coffee, get, get you know get things flowing, and then by you know maybe within a couple hours, 
I, I head to the studio and I, and I start to work. Some days I'm, I'm charged and full of energy and, and I, I'm rushing to get there because I can't wait. And then there are days, you know, you, you don't feel like going, but I, you know, I make myself go. I, it's, it is my job. It's what I do for a living. So, so, um, how do you, um, handle, um, having like a creative block? You know, there are days like, you'd like to think like ideas, but you can't just get it through your hands. So, do you, um, do you force it or? Well, yeah, you know, like I said, I, I, there, yes, I, one has to strong arm yourself into that. You know, you have to, you have to, to make it happen. Um, like I had said earlier, you know, you can't wait for that muse to come sit on your shoulder. You, you get out there and, and you, and you push and, and there are days where you're successful and some days you're not. But, but, uh, you know, like, like I mentioned earlier, having, having that, your routine makes a big difference as far as getting, getting work done and being productive. Okay. So, um, this like a, you know, continuing learning process, right? So you don't stop learning course of course right is always you, you yes i mean i mean honestly when, whenever i sit down to a blank canvas or a blank sheet of paper i feel just like i felt when i was 12 14 or 18 you know i i look at it and it's and and there's nothing there and um it, it, i feel like i'm lost i don't know i don't know i don't know what i'm what i'm doing but what happens is that experience, you know, as you start to work, as you, as you begin, your history of working, your, your history of knowledge and understanding of, of the, of the thing that, that you've pursued comes into play. And, and, and it, 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 it does, you know, it happens. But yeah, it's, 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 I don't sit there and, and, and start and, 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 and it's, I have this whole thing concretely, you know, in, Embedded in my in, in my mind's eye, um, I oftentimes I feel just as lost as I as I always have. But 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 again, like I said, you know, years of experience kicks in. Oh, uh, thank you very much for that because uh, I'm just you know want to gather some inspiration. So thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, I would just like to ask a question regarding um, you producing graphic novels. Um, how do you, I mean, can you discuss us like the process in actually making it? I mean, how long does it take you and how do you keep on drawing the same characters over and over again? Yeah, well, you know, that, that that's the thing about, that's the thing about comics and, you know, graphic novels is, is that it is, it is labor intensive. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's, and there's a certain amount of, Monotony to it, to the act of doing it, and it has to be. It's sort of built into it because you have to have that continuity, you know, to to make it all work. Um, but you know, it's it's again, it, you know, it, it, it's about habit and ritual, and 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 it once you once you start, I, I what I do is I kind of give myself daily or daily goals, you know, and I, and I think, okay, my goal today, whether it takes me three hours or, or, you know, 18 hours is to, is to resolve or finish that page or finish whatever it is, whatever it is I set as my goal and I push towards that goal and then I repeat that and I repeat that and then as time goes by, eventually you get it done. But it's, you know, it's demanding. I, I, how do you break from, you know, how do you break from the monotony every now and then? Because I know you have to, I mean. Well, I'm not, you know, when I say monotony, I don't mean, I'm not implying that it's always absolutely boring to do you know it's not boring i mean it's you're doing the same thing i didn't say i didn't i don't i didn't want to imply that it was boring i just wanted to say that you know, you're doing the same thing over and over again well you know one for me personally you know i've, I've always in and when i was more involved in doing doing comics i still i still pursued other things you know i was still painting i was still doing book covers you know so you have all those other things there that sort of break that. So that helps you. Break that route. Sure. It helps, it helps me. And of course, all those things feed into each other. They support each other, you know, on a, artistically speaking and, and, uh, um, uh, contextually speaking, you know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Hi. Um, I'm a really big fan of the fountain, and um, since you were talking about um, veering away from what's literal and um, allegories, uh, was it inadvertent on your part to portray the characters from the fountain as um, part of the Spanish crusade, Crusades uh, while framing the plot um, in Buddhist philosophy since reincarnation was involved and did you was that was that contrast um intentional on your part did did you want to relay some sort of message by putting those two together putting i don't know if i'm quite following the question putting putting what together um because uh I noticed that in the plot of the fountain, um, there was reincarnation involved. But then, since that's a Buddhist philosophy, uh, I also noticed that the past lives of the characters um, were f uh, set in the Spanish Crusades, which is heavily based on Catholicism. Right. And just the contrast of those two philosophies was that was that um, something that you intended to do, and what what was your intent? What was your intention? Well, you know, well, first of all, you know, I have to say that that it is it's Aronofsky's story, right? So, so I I didn't I didn't write the story itself, so I can't speak for him a hundred percent, you know, because I, I I'm I'm not I'm not sure what a hundred percent what his thinking there was, you know. I mean that that you have to remember that that part that aspect of the story was also. Um, Isabel's or or Liz's writing. It was her story that that she was that she was writing. Um, well, obviously, it was, you know, it was, it was re reflective of, of themselves. It, it it was the part of the story that wasn't uh, wasn't meant to be uh, uh, real life. You know, do you know what I mean? So so I think there was a suggestion there of 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 reincarnation in this in the structure of the story, but but I think it had, that had more to do with the contemporary the contemporary time time and the and the and the future the, 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 right the future time. Okay, I don't know if that answers your question fully, but yeah. I'll ask you something about your work with Meltdown. I, I can't think actually of any work where two artists collaborated like you like you and Jay Muth did, where basically you were the one drawing Wolverine and Jay Muth was drawing Havoc. And now that everything is pretty digital in the world of comics, do you think that what you guys did Will ever be done again? Well, I, what what? Explain to me why why the digital aspect really play. How how does that play play into it as far as your question? Well, I think for one, it's because like between pencils and inkers, they don't even have to live in the same state now. You know, you can just basically scan and email or do or do that kind of thing. Whereas basically with your work with Jay, you had to be liter physically together to do that. And I mean, I, I actually can't think of any work right now where that's actually been done, you know? So yeah, I, I suppose you're right. I, I guess, you know, for people who are working with, with, with making digital imagery, they can, they, they can, they can send it back and forth almost immediately. Um, until they until they work out the work out the the, the image, I haven't, that's interesting. I haven't I haven't thought about that. So so maybe digital work does, or you know, maybe there is some some big positive benefit there. Um, I I think though, you know, being together, working together, and you know, uh, chalking eye to eye, and 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 working on this part and handing it over, and 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 he works another area, and then able to throw it back to me, and I think that. There's more to it than just you know than than the than the craft of it you know there, there's also that 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 organic 
interaction that 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 really makes that that adds somehow it adds an extra layer of spirit to the thing that well it's not i mean it may be sort of an abstract notion but but somehow i think i think it's it's there it's present and and uh and it's felt by the by the by the viewer that that maybe just wouldn't be there if one was 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 scanning and and sending it you know via you send it or something, you know so like here for example at your back we have a we have a painting of of Logan okay which is i guess typical of what you were saying that you normally don't like drawing them in their costumes so in meltdown i know that you had to eventually draw wolverine in his costume was that something that marvel forced you to do or <laughs> no no not you know and i don't want to suggest that it wasn't fun to do that i mean there there was still the 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 kid in me that that really you know i still like you know to some degree i still I, I still like that and it was it was fun for a bit to 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 put put them in in the costume um um but that sort of it sort of ran its course pretty quickly and I was, I was happy to, to to move away from there um so it, i'm kind of blown it out of proportion when i when i when i say that i i was you know didn't want to do it at all cuz i i did it, it was kind of fun are there any more questions Same kind of way. Um, well, well, in this case, to some degree, I mean, you know, where where John Muth and I lived in the, in the same area. As a matter of fact, we for a little bit of time we shared a, a studio together. Um, you know, the writers didn't live in the same same place we were living, but but you know, we were we were lived close enough where we, we could have our meetings, and and especially when we went into the Marvel offices and and met with Archie Goodwin, who was the editor. Um, uh, you know uh, that that was that was always an enjoyable thing, especially back then when it was much more open. But you know, before it became so so much. Were, now you try to go to, you go to Marvel and there's so much security and all that. There it was little it was a little more open and a little more casual. Um, and uh, you know, you go you go and have your lunch and and you spend two hours or three hours talking about the project and what you, what you can do and the possibilities and we're all throwing ideas back and forth you know um i do miss that 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 that, that part that camaraderie and that interaction uh i think just really made a difference back then now on the other hand when i was doing some other books like like uh tell me dark i was able to work with carl wagner carl edward wagner um because he did live in the same town that, that i lived in and so I, w I was able to go over there he would cook for me you know he would he would make his famous uh uh potato gratin and 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 break out the scotch and we were you know we would spend an afternoon together talking about the project and what what we could do with it um that that was a little bit more of of, of what you're what you're talking about and that you know that that was certainly great so in the world of art, you mentioned that artists like Gustav Klimt, Egon Schiele influence you. What about what about your comic comic book influences? Who were the artists who influenced you? Well, I would say my my biggest influence as as a teenager, you know, pre pre college, um, when I was I mean. I, I was more of a I was actually more of a fan of of, of single image picture making book covers and and that sort of thing and and Frank Frazetta was was the you know my the master you know and 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 I I was not, and I wasn't even that big of a fan of of say fantasy art or or, or that genre but I I did love Frazetta's work and to me you know amongst all those guys who did who did who did uh uh who worked in that genre there was no comparison you know there were there, there were some other guys that i may like i may have liked and I certainly recognized as being talented and good but then there was frazetta and there was, there was so much disparity between between him and everyone else 
that you know I have to say he he was you know he was my my biggest most important influence pre pre college before I was a, before I went moved to New York before I just started going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art going to the galleries you know before the the floodgates opened um, I didn't I didn't I didn't have that kind of exposure to to uh, to the, the world of, of, of painting of art history um, on that level. I mean, I, you know, I knew it from again. I knew it from books and and some from you know, a couple art teachers from 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 elementary school and that sort of thing. But not, but but, but it's a diff again. It's different than than going to the Met and 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 spending a half a day just in the the section with the Rembrandts and the and the uh, Caravaggios and Michelangelos and, and you know stuff like that. Um, what was the question? I got off track here. What was the question? Again? Yeah, so so the, he was he was the main he was the main guy. But as far as com straight up comics, um, I did I did I was interested in some. You know, I was again I wasn't I wasn't an avid collector, but but one reason was probably that I didn't have access to them because at the time there were no comic shops. Comic shops weren't. They didn't exist very, generally speaking. I mean, of course, I'm sure New York had had the comic shops in, in bigger cities, but but where I where I grew up, there, there were no comic shops. I had to get my comics from the Seven Eleven, you know, from the Convenient Mart, and on the spinner rack. And you know, it could be that I bought one month, you know, an issue one month, an issue the second month, and then all of a sudden, the, the third month, it never showed up, you know, or the two copies they ordered were already sold. So there was no consistency there for me to even have that the option to, of, of being a, an avid collector, at least as a follower of a specific title, you know. Um, but I, but I still, I, still though, there were guys I, 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 I gravitated to. Um, I, I, there were the, the ones that I like just just as as art. I like, you know, I like Paul Galassi when he was doing Master of Kung Fu and, and, um, um, I liked Corbin from, from Creepy and Eerie. I liked Richard Corbin a lot. Um, and then, then there were, there were some guys who initially I didn't care about until I started reading their work. And then I, then I understood, you know, like the light went off. And that would be like someone like Jack Kirby, um, who, who, who I, I just looking at, you know, as a, as a teenager was looking at, I didn't, I didn't like visually. But then once I started reading, I developed a taste for. For, for it, you know, um, and then and then there was, you know, I still think that the the absolute best comic artist storyteller in the in the industry is is Barry Windsor Smith. You know, I, th I think hands down he's 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 my he's my favorite. Even though he's really in the in the big picture, he's not done that much, right? But what he has done, I I, I am I'm a huge and still am a big a big fan of. Um, I initially, I knew about your work through Rashomon, the oh, right. the cover. So I'm really a big fan. Uh, I was wondering if you want uh, just a quick sharing about how you uh, the process of uh, creating the cover. Uh, did you like the movie or? Sure. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Um, yeah, Rush. I had done for Criterion. I had done one previously. I had done one DVD cover for 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 them called uh, Miss Julia, and um, it was interesting. I mean, I, I certainly enjoyed doing it. Why? Why that particular title? I don't. You know, I don't really know why I was asked to do that. But but because I didn't feel like it really fit within the the type of work that I, that I do, but you know, I, I still wanted to do it because it was. I I, I really appreciate the you know Criterion and the, and their, their titles and and their their packaging and all that. And then I got the opportunity, I got the call uh, to do uh, Rashomon, and which is, if you know my work, you know it's right up my alley. So it's, so that's so that I was I, I jumped on without even hesitating. And um, you know when I got when I spoke with the art director, he was he told me that they wanted me to he would like me to approach it. He, he wanted to, they didn't want an illustration; they wanted me to do a painting. 
that fit right in with my with my personal work. Of course, I didn't believe that because you know I, I, I've heard, I've heard that before. Oh, we like your work. Would you do us this 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 piece, this illustration? And do what you do. We want you to do what you do. But then when it gets down to it, oh, but can you do this, 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 and this, right? So I didn't believe it then. So when I did my, I did a few sketches for, or developed a sketch for the cover, and I sent them in. And so I had this, I had the center figure that you know of, of Mafuni. Um, and I had broken up the image, you know, which ties in with the story, which I'll talk about in a minute. But so I had that, but I also had, like a, like a movie poster, I had a floating, uh, vignette images from other scenes around around the center image, and so, the art, so I sent that off to 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 the art director, and he and I he called back and said, hey, he goes, this is great, but we don't want all that other stuff. We just want Lafoni there in the center. Remember, we want you to do your painting, like your like your personal work. That's the last thing I expected to hear. So, which I said, great. So I, stri I stripped all the other excess out of out of the image and and did did exactly that and and so that was it was a, a wonderful experience a great a great gig, you know, and um, and it was my for, I won't say only because I did one other one other movie poster but it was my it was it was uh, um, my first at least U.S. Uh, movie poster I did one for some some uh, an independent Mexican movie. Um, but, uh, it was the first poster I've ever had that was, you know, that was used as, as the poster. I mean, this was obviously, it was a theatrical re-release of the film, not, it wasn't going to be, you know, in every theater across the country, but it was only in select art house theaters. But still, it, it was, it was going to be on the, you know, up on the marquee and backlit and all that. So I was really excited about that. Um, especially with it being something that, that ties directly in with, with my work and what I'm interested in and what I do. Um. And since then, I've, I've just, you know, now they're, they're going to use the image on the Blu-ray DVD release of, of, of the film. And, I, and I've done uh, four other interior pieces for the, you know, for the, for the booklet insert. Uh, not paintings, draw, sort of mixed media drawings. And so, so I'm really happy to, or excited about uh, seeing that next, it comes out, I think, next, next month, November. So, so. Okay. Was it ever difficult for you to draw or paint someone else's story, and how do you begin that kind of work? Was it ever difficult for you to draw or paint someone else's story, and how do you begin that kind of work? Well, you know, you're right. I mean, that that it's sort of why if if you. With all all the the, the hand, I mean, I'm not done a lot of graphic novels. You know, I've only done a handful, and in every in every case, except for maybe with the fountain, I've already told you how that that came about. Except for the fountain, all the other projects were projects that I I developed with the writer, hand in hand. You know, it wasn't like they gave me a they gave me a, a script, and then I I illustrated the book. You know, I, I I was able to develop the project from from the from the get go. Um, so, so I, I know myself well enough to know that if it's not, if it doesn't fit in the, in the area of, of picture making that I like, uh, I don't want to do it. I know not to even go there. Um, um, so, so I, I've had, like, I've had a hand in, 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 you know, in, in all these books. So, so generally speaking, that the, the, the elements that that were that comprise the story were things that I had, you know, some some interest in doing. I mean, don't get me wrong. With when you're doing graphic novels, comics, there's always stuff in the in in there that you would you have to put in that maybe you wouldn't choose just to draw for fun, you know? Because I mean, there is the story that has to be told. There is, a, you know, the structure of the thing that has to that has to be dealt with. Um, so it's not. I'm not telling you that there, that in every case, you know, what I I wanted to draw, you know, the, every, every particular scene, but at least, at least though, I, I was able to, to, in, in a, in a broad sense, uh, work on, on projects that, that were in the, that was in the, 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 the environment that, I, that, I, that I was, 
that I enjoy, you know. Um, but there's, there was probably one, one book that I was, that I was a, a part player in the, uh, one, a book called Destiny, um, where that I did the framing sequences for. Um, that, that was probably the only, and it's not even completely my book, even though I did enough pages to constitute a graphic novel, an independent graphic novel, if, you know, um, that was probably the only story where that I uh, was, I uh, was given and doing verbatim what, you know, what was, what was given to me. Um, have you ever worked for a, an agency, like a nine to five day job when you were starting out? And how did you transition from working for an agency to working for yourself as an independent? Um, no, I've never, I've never worked, for, you know, I, I like, I think I mentioned earlier, I, I started doing short, short stories for Epic Illustrated, which was an imprint of Marvel when I, while I was still in college, um, as, almost as a, as a, a work study, you know, uh, substitute. Um, so, so I was, you know, in, 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 in doing these short stories at that stage, when I when I graduated, I was able to kind of you know continue on and develop that that initial you know um, um, career start. So so no, I'm not I'm not ever worked directly for you know a full time job in an agency or anything like that. I mean I, I have you know pre college I you know I I had summer jobs and, and you know that sort of thing where I've worked. Where I work for the man, but, but you know, other, other than that, no, I've been fortunate enough to, to be an independent freelance freelancer. You know, my 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 whole career. Uh, um, for those who worked for the man and is deciding or finally deciding to work for themselves, do you have any advice? Like, you know, because there are a lot of people who will tell you that. You need to be stable financially and everything, and risking letting go of working for or letting go of that day job would be risky. But but if you really want to do it, like do do they have any advice or anyone who's kind of afraid because they they are about to do it? Well, you know, I, I don't know that I even have the right really to to, uh, to offer any kind of advice along those lines because I've not had to you know ex experience that. Um, you know, I know it's I know it's a hard hard thing because you have to certainly if you're if you want to to pursue being an artist and and to make work, you have you you have to make it. You have to produce. You have to grow. You have to develop, and you have to have time to do that. But at the same time, you have to survive and make a living. So so so, and I know that that it it from friends and and who who have you know gone down the path that you're talking about. I know it's a hard thing to, to, to work all day at a place and then come home exhausted and try to, tr to, to make work after the fact, you know. I, I, I suppose if, you know, if I was in that position, I, w I would probably try to find some kind of balance where, where that I could, I could find some sort of position, a job that, that, you know, part time where that I, I, you know, that, that, would would at least I could you know could make enough money to 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 get by, but still and still therefore give my I would be able to give myself time to 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 develop my my own work and personal work, um, and just try, ultimately try to find that balance between between the two. I know that's a, that that's a challenge, and um, and a lot of times you know it, it would depend on I guess what what avenue or path, artistically speaking, you want you would want to travel down. Um, but like I was saying earlier, you have to have the work. You know, you have to you have to you have to have you have to be prepared if that opportunity comes to you. You know, you, you know, it's you have to you ha you need to you can't wait for the opportunity to come and then produce the work and then grow and develop, right? You, you have you have to have you have to be prepared to go when when that if you're lucky enough to have that opportunity come to you. Also, I don't you know I think that you do have to get out and try to make it happen. You know, to sit around thinking that it's going to come to you um, it, it w is not the thing to do. 
there are a lot, there's a lot of competition out there, a lot of people who, who want that same thing. So you have to, you know, get out there and, and do the best you take, can to, to, to create that opportunity for yourself. You know, I have, a, I have, I have, there are some artists who, who, who don't, who don't make work until they have to, right? They, 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 they if, it's, if they're illustrators, they, they, they just do the work when they get a job. If they're not, they don't have the job, they don't make work. Well, I was, I was never that way. If I, if I didn't have a job, I still made work. I still, I, I still painted imagery. I still drew. I made pictures. And in doing so, there were, there were a handful of times where I, I would get a call from a magazine saying that, hey, we, we, it was, at the time it was called Pickup Art. And they'd say, listen, we don't have time to commission, uh, you to do this piece, but we have this article about such and such. Do you have anything that maybe could work for this article? And since I had a bank of imagery, right, paintings and drawings, nine out of ten times I had something that I felt maybe would work. And in some cases I would present, you know, I'll say, well, I have these, you know, I have these images that are, you know, that I've done. And in some cases, instead of just getting one, they would go, oh, this work, and oh, this one, and this one. So they would pick up three, three pieces or, you know, that, that sort of thing. Again, that's being prepared. It's not waiting. It's not waiting around for for the work to come. It's me making making work, and um, and uh, then able to capitalize on it if if the opportunity shows itself. What was the what was the last part of that question? Uh, we expect, uh, to well, I hope so. I mean, I had that in mind. That's why that's why I, I brought my my camera with me. And 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 after this event tonight, I'm going to have, uh, I think, I hope, some free time to to explore Manila. And 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 uh, I'm hoping that I'm, I have that in mind to to to. to to hopefully come across something that 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 will inspire me, or that I can incorporate into into some uh, to a new painting, whether it's it's direct or about that, or just an element woven into a you know a more a, a, a larger work. I'm not sure yet, but yeah, but certainly I'm always on the lookout, you know, for, for that sort of thing. And I would love to. I would I would certainly love to 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 incorporate something into, into my into my future work, especially now that that some of my my more recent paintings, like I was mentioning earlier, where the environment is play, is moving into the foreground and playing a bigger role in the makeup of the piece. I would I would love to to be able to or come across something that I can incorporate into, into some newer works. You were just in Baraka the last few days. Didn't Baraka inspire you? Yes, it certainly <laughs> did. Um, and, I, and, I, and I took shots from that. So, so I think you'll, you'll see some stuff happening. Say it loud. How do I see it? The last, what was the last part of the question? Well, I, I mentioned this earlier in, in an interview. Is, you know, art it seems like today there's there's no, and I'm talking about in the in the sort of primary or the or the upper echelon art world. There's there's no one school of thought or one one big movement. You know, you know, like in the fifties, there was the abstract expressionist, or and then in, at the turn of the century, there there were the impressionists, and that that was the roost. You know, that that was the main thrust. I don't really see that. I don't really see that today. I, I think that there, because of of so much access to everything via the internet, that that there are pockets of things happening now. 
like a pocket of, 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 of movements, schools of thought, you know, and that, that because of access to those the independent schools of thought, that there are enough people there to support, to support those independent pockets. Unlo you know, you know, in the past, in the past, you, you know, they, they, they had to rely on, on just the media. Life, when, when, when Life magazine did the article about, about uh, Jackson Pollock, you know, that was, that was a big deal, but that was, that was the thing that, that ex exposed them. Now, you know, every, every little sort of movement or school of thought can have, can, can have, people can access and, and, and if, if it's interesting, can develop a little, little fan base or a bigger fan base and they can grow. How it affects graphic novels and comics in the future, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I mean, what's, what's happening, what, you know, what is happening with print and, and, and publication, you know, with, with the digital age and ebooks and that sort of thing. We don't really know, do we? You know, I can't imagine, I can't really imagine something replacing at least an art book, you know, having that, that tangible thing in your hand where you can, the weight of it and the feel of it. But I, but I feel that way about just a, you know, regular, you know, novel. You know, I like I like the smell of the paper, and I like I like the the weight of the book, and 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 the, the cover, and and the text, how it, how it looks on the spine. You know, I like all that all that. I can't imagine losing that, but yet that's what I grew up with, and that's what I have love for. I, I, and I suppose if you don't have that, if you only are exposed to to um, e-books and that sort of thing from the start when you're young maybe maybe you never develop that taste for that that sort of thing you know um, again so I, I don't know how it will affect affect comics and graphic novels in the future I can't imagine comics really being that interesting solely online um, but who knows you know I, I, I can't really answer that question with any sort of uh, authority any more questions? I've been looking at your paintings in the internet since 2006, and last night was a great opportunity to see your works. I was looking at it very, uh, real close, and I, I just wonder how long does it take for you to finish one large piece of painting? Well, like I mentioned earlier, it, you know, it can vary, but, but generally speaking, a, a larger, more substantial Compositionally complex piece usually takes me three months, three three months, give or take, to, you know, to complete. Um, but I am working on other things at the same time. You know, I may I may have, for example, last this, over the last three or four months, I've been working on two two really large paintings. So I was able to bounce back and forth between actually three large paintings. But in the past, generally, what it, it's been one one more substantial piece, and then a couple of smaller pieces that that I'm able to, to, to bounce back and forth between. Now, a smaller work obviously isn't going to take me three months to to complete. Um, but then again, I, you know, I'm not an artist that paints a painting in a day either, because of the 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 the, 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 the quality that, that I'm looking for. I like you know, I, I like paint that has history to it, where that has depth and volume, and and that's not. Surface, surfacey. You know, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Certainly, there are great paintings that are very thin, very surface. Uh, that are painted in, in one day. You know, Luke Timmons paint, paints a painting a day, and I, I love his work. So it's not that I'm discounting that, but for what I'm looking for and what I'm going for, um, uh, just by the nature of it, it, it take it takes time to develop. You know. Um, even when I finish a painting, or when I, I see when I'm closing in on a painting, I still want that painting to sit around the studio for at least a two or three more, more weeks. Even if I don't touch it again, I want to have the opportunity to touch it. Even if it's putting one mark in a corner, or taking out this mark over here, you know, or repainting a whole section of it, um, I like to have that opportunity. The worst thing to me is is to finish a painting for an exhibition, or for say for a group show. And it has to go out, you know, within a few days of finishing it. I don't, I just don't like that feeling. Whether it's, I mean, even if the painting's finished and I, and I, and I never touch it again, I, w I want the opportunity. I like having the opportunity to, to be settled with that.
And um, um, so anyhow, that, that's, that's my answer. Okay. Last questions? Can you tell us about the painting on the banner over there? Because I think that's my favorite from what I've seen of yours. Yes, right. But that's, that's a painting of mine called New Spring, and it's in, and in the exhibition over at Blanc Gallery, whichever direction it is. Um, it's, it's the most recent of, of the works in the, in the show. Um, it was painted last year. And uh, it's, it's a larger work. It's about uh, 60 by 48. Um, you know, this is just a, this is just a fragment of, of the painting, and it, it's a painting about my young friend Senna and her friend Fumi, who are best buddies in 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 high school, and they're both they were at that time they were both they, this was their last summer together or last spring together before they were going to head off to 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 college to university, and um, and it's, so it's about it's about their relationship their their bond. And and their eventual, you know, sep separation, like you know, like a lot of us have gone through, you know, where you have your friends from from school, high school, or even college in some cases, and and you, you know, eventually have, you know, you, life changes, right? I mean, not, and it's not a negative thing, but it's still, it's, it's a big change at, at that point in one's in one's life. So so it's you know, it's primarily about that. That's the thrust of the idea. That's that's the the the, the content. Um, and in in the painting, if you if you could see the whole thing, there are other elements in the painting. There are there are, you know there's the sort of dramatic kind of gesture of the two figures, but then also in the painting there are sort of banal kind of everyday ordinary objects from my studio: a fan, an extension cord, um, a, 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 a vase, um, things that that are just everyday items combined with with again this more gestural dramatic. Not exactly fantastical, but 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 um, uh, grouping of the, of the two figures. I th I relate that to to in a way my actual painting that the the, the uh, tactile aspect of my painting where where I combine um, more articulated, r more fully realized areas of paint against more abstracted or expressionistic areas. I, I like the idea of, of of juxtaposing those two elements together. I think I think. Doing so for me creates this, or finding the right balance between those two extremes creates a kind of an, an, uh, a charge or an electricity that 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 is that for me is, is, is stimulating. So so in, in a way, you know that that sort of mixture of calligraphy is this, is this, is the same is compares to also mixing the the again the the, the, the figures with it, with the everyday ordinary objects around the studio. Any more questions? No more? Okay, one more. One last. Um, so a little bit away from the painting. I'm thinking more like a, uh, as like cross-training. What else do you do? Do you watch a lot of movies or read books or I don't know? I do all those things, naturally, right? I mean, I, 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 I love film. I, you know, I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not a film buff. But but I certainly you know appreciate uh, uh, directors and 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 good storytelling. Um, I like a variety of. I don't have a specific genre that I that I that I like. I mean I like I like a variety of films. I like independent art house films, but I also like you know some mainstream uh, um, film, films. Um, the same same with literature. You know I, li I like I like. Again, you know, I had mentioned earlier, I, I like I like stories that 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 are not so literal, that are not so layman or oriented. I, I like I like ambiguity and 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 uh, and suggestion, mystery. You know, I like when they're when they're when, when it's not necessarily where everything's spelled out. You know, um, I like that in film. I like that in comics. I like that in in, in picture making and painting. Um. Other interest is what you, yeah. I, I, you know, I, in, as a, as I, I, in the past, as, as a teenager, and for a number, for quite a number of years, I studied martial arts. Uh, you know, I, I, I just studied Japanese karate, and until now. Well, no, I don't, no, no, no. I, I, from age about age 
I don't know what it was, 11 or 12 up until you know, 18 when I went off to college, I, I, I studied pretty extensively. So that, that really made up a big part of my, my, my teenage years. Um, it, that was really important in my life. And of course, when I went off to college, and then you know, I, get, I got caught up in, in obviously pursuing art, and, and that was kind of set aside. And then eventually, when I was you know early 30s, I I, I discovered that a, a instructor a sensei that that was um, that I really appreciated, and so I started training again for a handful of years. Um, so that was interesting experience to go back to it after being away from it a while. Thinking that you know, I, th I thought that you know, in my mind, I could do all these things that that I I was able to do when I was 16, but that the body just wouldn't do it anymore, and I couldn't quite figure that out, you know, because uh, it seemed, I, I, you know, here I could do it, but 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 I, I just couldn't couldn't make the body do it anymore. So that was that was interesting. And then uh, my children came along, you know, I have two boys, uh, Carrig and Ian, and of course when they came along, that that. Uh, you know, I dropped that again. You know, my training again, and 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 that became my my interest.